Have you ever wondered why when you give your life to the Lord or start walking with God, it feels like all of a sudden the enemy starts to attack you? You feel like your life would have gotten easier, but now it seems like you're under a spiritual attack almost daily. Or you start to notice that you start to do things for the Lord and all of a sudden you get bombarded from each side with all sorts of spiritual warfare. Maybe you just start a Bible college and you're dealing with temptation because now you're not at home. You're not around your family or your accountability group. You're bombarded with parties, uh, women, um, sexual desire, porn, all these sorts of things that come for just typical college students. Or maybe it's not even at school. Maybe you just started a new ministry position at a new church. And now the enemy is trying to use women there or men there at your church to tempt you and to try to get you to walk away from or fall out of the grace of God with your your actions and your behavior. Make no mistake about it, guys. This is a spiritual warfare that we're in and the devil definitely hates us and doesn't want us to walk in God's victory. But we have the Holy Spirit guiding us, giving us uh, direction, giving us prompting and nudging to be obedient to the Lord. And we see that as Jesus started his ministry before he got started speaking in the synagogues, after his baptism, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days of fasting and prayer. It says that the Spirit led Jesus there. The Spirit gave Jesus his power and he led him to this season of preparatory fasting and prayer. But all throughout that time, it says that Satan was tempting him. And through this tempting, Jesus showed the devil that the power comes from the word of God. And not only that, but he walked out the season of 40 days of prayer and fasting as the Israelites should when they were in the season of wilderness as well. But what they didn't do, Jesus succeeded in. And I'm going to read these uh, verses to you and these study notes to you and show you guys why the power that we have to defeat the enemy lies within these pages of the Bible, guys. This is the most powerful weapon that we have when it comes to defeating the enemy. And a lot of us don't even use it. So let's read this, guys. The temptation of Jesus. This is the start of Luke chapter four, verse one. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil, being not he got tempted or he was tempted or Satan tempted him a time or two. This seems to mean that he was tempted, being tempted each of those 40 days and the verses that we see later on are just the culmination of those 40 days. Satan started going extra hard on Jesus because he knew his 40 days of fasting was coming to a close and he didn't get him to stumble or trip up for those 40 days. So now he's bombarding him left and right. What about this? What about that? Look at all the land. I can give it to you. And we'll get into that in a second. For 40 days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And so we see instantly these 40 days are up. Jesus is hungry. He's starving and he's getting ready to go out on his on his ministry. But beforehand, Satan tries to trip him up like, are you hungry? Turn this bread into stone. Use your powers. Use your deity to not trust God to, to provide for you, but you make this bread turn to stone and you feed yourself because you're Jesus, the son of God. And you can do that. And it's crazy how the devil will use um, spirit, spiritual things to try to get us to trip ourselves up. Oh, you know, well, you're you're making YouTube videos about the Lord. You're making YouTube videos about Jesus. You know, a lot of things. Don't let nobody tell you anything. Don't let nobody tell you how to interpret the scripture. Don't listen to the study notes. Trust your gut. Trust your judgment. You know what the words mean. That's how the devil will tempt us. You know, um, the devil will get you puffed up, full of pride, thinking you know everything, like you got it all figured out. And that's just where he wants to trap you. Because if we get to trusting in ourselves too much, trusting that we know the word of God, we're, we're setting ourselves up for failure. We have to rely on Jesus. We have to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to show us what the Bible means. We have to have discernment. We can't always... Not that there's anything wrong with listening to a preacher or a person that's trying to share knowledge with you or trying to, you know, give you biblical teaching. But you always have to run it by scripture. Trust the scripture. Anyway, 
And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory for it. It has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord, your God and him only shall you serve. There's another uh, instance where in this final time, uh, Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And Satan, I mean, he's correct to an extent. He is the ruler of this world. But at the end of the day, Jesus is the one that created it all. How is Satan going to give Jesus back his own creation? While he has authority down here on this earth, Jesus has authority in heaven. He created everything. The, the word of God says that we shall not have any other gods before the Lord. And so for Satan to be tempting Jesus, like, this isn't your stuff. Worship me and you can get it. Jesus ain't playing that. Jesus already knows you shall not worship the Lord your God. And here we see that in the in the in the wilderness, they told Aaron to make him a, a God to serve because Moses hadn't come back down from up in his 40 days of fasting up on the hill with or up on the, uh, the mountain with with God. And so in that time, Aaron fashioned a calf out of the gold that they had. And they were worshiping the, the calf. How do you go from seeing the Lord deliver you from the Egyptians and all the plagues and all the miraculous uh, things that the Lord was doing, manna from the sky, quell, and then you go to make us a calf so we can have something to worship. You should have no other gods but God. No other gods but serving Jesus. And here Satan is trying to get Jesus to tempt, to, or tempt him to serve him. And then we see this one. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you and on their hands, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So here we see also that the devil knows the scripture just like we do inside and out. You got to understand how long Satan's been around. Satan knows this word. He knows the, the word of God inside and out, and he knows how to twist it. He knows how to make it uh, fit his agenda. He knows how to make things seem biblical when they're not. They're actually demonic. And we see this all the time with these newfound doctrines that are making leeway for sinful things to be okay. We see this all the time in other religions that twist the word of God and remove things and add things to scripture to make it fit their doctrine. And that's just not OK. And that's just like the demonic, because even Satan comes as an angel of light. So sometimes it may sound biblical, but if you don't have true discernment and have ears to hear, you won't hear the, the truth of what's actually being told to you, because it's going to sound what soothes your itching ears. You're going to hear what you want to hear. And that's why you got to know what the word of God says. This Bible, guys, is your only line of defense next to prayer and being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you don't read the word of God, I don't know why people say I don't hear from God. It's clearly right here in these pages. You may not always hear an audible voice, although a lot will. You may not hear a prophetic word from the Lord, although some of you will. But there's no way you can read the Bible and say, I don't hear from God because the words are right on this page for you to know and understand exactly how you are to carry out your life, how you are to defeat Satan in the spiritual attacks. Every attack that he has, there's scripture for it. And Jesus proved it. If he didn't sin in 40 days of fasting and prayer, being continuously tempted by the devil, temptation after temptation after temptation, and every single one of them, he used scripture to defeat the enemy with. And that means that we can too. Make no mistake about it, guys. I'm not saying that we are like Jesus, but we are called to be Christ-like in our walk. And if Jesus defeated the enemy by using scripture, that's exactly what we ought to do too. Because while we are not Jesus and we're not trying to be Jesus, we are trying to be as close to being like him as possible. That is the image of Christ that we walk around with. We have to let people see Jesus in us. We have to be the reflection of a true believer. And how are we going to do that if we're not using scripture 
to help us remain steadfast and persevere in the temptation that the enemy is going to use over us because he will tempt us. You will be tempted. Your life is not going to get easier just because you gave your life to the Lord. It's going to get harder because now the enemy is going to be fighting you. He doesn't fight those that are on his team. He's got no need to go after who he already has. But when he loses you to the Lord, that's when he tries to tempt you. It gets kind of spiteful because the enemy's not good. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. I saw those clothes at Target that said, Satan loves pronouns. Satan loves me. The world is fooled, guys. The wool is being pulled over their eyes. And we have to have discernment and wisdom that comes from the word of God. So that's going to do it for this one. Use scripture when you guys are tempted. Catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.